point of some kind. And the fact that ECF was not working from remotely what I've heard uh, were some problems that might be able to be tackled with uh, a bit more coordination and leadership in the organization itself. Coming into it, we found more problems, obviously. Communication among six projects was difficult. Usually there are 20 heads, including execution team's heads, in one Zoom link, coordinating five, from five to six different time zones to decide issues, to decide what issues to decide. And there are issues as trivial as what people to hire. There are issues as big as how are we going to do our whole structure, whether founding members get to have more say in grants, in welcoming new members into the ECF initiative. And then this also resulted in slow and somewhat inflexible grant giving procedure. Grants up to certain amount needs to be also approved and voted by the members which are all very important, busy projects in the ecosystem. So waiting for the voting to happen on GitHub was also quite a drill for the exec execution team in order to push out for more grants and more support to the ecosystem. And with that, we also cannot address bigger problems that eco eco the ecosystem actually requires. There are more than nonprofit projects which are very, very important and was in desperate need has been in desperate need of support um, that, that we need to do, need to support, and need to understand in order for the technology to go out there and to help more people. But we were, um, we were confined in our space, in our range of nonprofit projects because of some other reasons that we'll, I will talk about. And then governance, right? I touched upon this, and then there are a strong voice of wanting to kind of um, implement it, the incrementalism, to slowly craft what can be governed, what should be governed, and who to be put in the board of directors to decide for what future members should, uh, should enjoy uh, as their privileges and as their obligations. Then, of course, in the process, lawyers came in. As much as uh, I have respect for my friends and family members even who work, who practice law, um, their stance are pretty much expectable. And then it is also easily an obstacle when we are trying to break shackles with our own exp experimentation and supporting certain projects. So with all of this um, uncertainty, there were no new members that were able to join officially. And that na naturally resulted in capital drain. And then we know the market crashed. So it was also inevitable that uh, all the members and the new members needed to mind their own survival and their own organization much more. And there is also um, backtrack of commitments to contribution. And that put our organization in a very difficult position. Of course, during which when all the minds are working on the same issue, there is also a need for leadership, and that is uh, in vacancy because there were simply no structure to empower a leader to make decisions for things to happen, and conflict of interests at every step of the way. And there are conflicts that are among members, there are between ECF team and the members, there are conflict of interest within the members' organization, and there are representatives appointed by members that play their personal interests also into the game, and there is plenty, lot of other conflict of interest that are not really on the table, but had to be addressed in order to push progress. Costs were huge too. Uh, operation, uh, the bills from law, law firms came flying, and then because there was no obvious division between what is the budget for the operation and what is supposed to be uh, the budget for grant giving, it was also difficult to continue to donate, and that resulted in the backtrack of, of commitments naturally. And ironically, we experienced the tragedy of Commons ourselves. Because when it's just even on the financial, uh, when it's everybody's money, it's nobody's money. And for the past month, 
after the restructuring, restructuring of ECF, I've been looking at the accounting books, very boring work, but there was a, a lot of the items that at least you say were recklessly spent and there were no guidance to these things. So we had all these problems, but there was a very strong will for ECF to continue to exist in order to fulfill its mission to begin with. And we need to do something. And f understanding all these problems are not enough because we need to also look at where we started and why we were doing this. Luckily, I was able to meet some of those who were the great minds behind the construction, uh, the conception of ECF in DEF CON 3 in Cancun. And here are some of the quotes that I got a lot of encouragement from and reinforced what I think is what ECF needs to be. ECF was implemented as a demonstration that EF does not need to have a monopoly on institutions within Ethereum without wealth possibly for development governance or even legitimacy. That ECF gets to not need to be anything that needs to be set in stone by lawyers with bylaws beforehand. ECF gets to be a process that is flexible, nimble, and responsive, adaptive to the needs of the community, and only as useful as it is able to build and retain legitimacy. So there were bigger visions and farther visions beyond what is just a grant program. We want to be able to become this organization, this vehicle that community can come together and make things happen and support its own initiatives. And for that to happen, we need to remove as much friction as possible in a process and be as open as possible to all players in the ecosystem for our, our entire um, technology development to happen. So naturally, when things don't work, you think about, let's blow it up. <laughs> let's just start from the beginning. What I had in mind is a complete flat structure with no privileges to any members and we support anything that would help with anything that can boost aggressive expansion. And I even think that we don't need to really hold an entity. We don't really need to hold the wallet, which gives you power to, del to distribute funds, but at the same time responsibilities and risks, and much less, un much less understanding that is up to date of what the ecosystem needs if you have your funds yourself. Any of us who are in the audience that runs funds would be able to understand that. It is difficult to keep, uh, when, when you have skin in a game, to also get an unbiased uh, perspective of what's going on. And also, more importantly, these members that were involved, that were contributing to this initiative, their own needs were not really addressed. Infrastructure projects will, in turn, of course, in long term, benefit everybody in the ecosystem. But in short term, there is no direct uh, incentive to continue to do it when they have other things to mind and other things to spend their time on. And they are important members and parts of the ecosystem as well. And their needs and helping them would be able to also boost the ecosystem and help our community to grow, which was not really addressed in the original mandate of ECF that is just simply about selfless good. So what do we do? I mean, it is difficult, but somebody got to do it. Somebody got to be the Cassandra that will have to tell the unwelcoming prophets to people that don't like them. And telling people that money is going out, is going to burn out soon. Telling people you don't want to give money anymore, just admit it, don't really force them to come honestly in front of you. And obviously, that leads to drama. And that leads also to things that I'm not very familiar with as a Chinese, which is politics. And also, if you go more forward to it, there is also the people that want to push for reforms and not so much into giving reforms. And that creates conflicts even within the execution team of ECF. And there are malicious intention that was tried to prove to members in order to stop that from happening. And then war happens, obviously. Was just discussion, but then it became more of open fire. 
And it took us some time to come down, to realize where we were from and what we wanted to do. Luckily, we have come to understanding with a few members and then was able to draft a proposal that was eventually pushed to the whole group of the founding members and got majority support for this reform. And we realized, of course, of all the thousands of serious projects that are working in Ethereum ecosystem and general decentralization ecosystems, there are a lot of problems of their being very hard and focused on their own work, which is people tend to not to be able to mine so much beyond their own domains. And there are obvious collaborative opportunities that were that was missed. And there are also redundant work that was done. There are people trying to find a perfect talent that fit what they need to do at this moment. And there are also projects that are the perfect chapters that are missing from the books that other projects are writing. And this is something simply a project itself does not have so much mind and energy and time and and the funding to do. And it is something that a community a union is called for. And that's why we have established two major objectives with our ECF 2.0. The first is to harmonize community concerns through various mutually agreeable means such as grants, strategic operational support, and community events. And these collaborations can be in any form that are deemed beneficial to the ecosystem, including partnerships, events, even investment programs, and assets that we write together and research that we, done, we can do together, workshops that through ECF can call from the, from the whole community to come together to do. And as our domain suggests, ECF.network, the original concept of ECF is to become an open, network of funds to come together to contribute to the common good and we are going to live up to that. That removes the control of certain funds and also the issue of the sense of loose control from people who will contribute to this initiative. Now our operation has expanded to more than grants. More of the work is going into coordination. We need to understand what's going on. We need to research on the needs of the members and the community in order to best serve everybody, every player in the ecosystem. And the source of funding still comes from the membership donation, but it's, much, it's significantly lower because it only goes into the operation for the nonprofit um, or ECF organization itself. And the members are open to all players including VCs, exchanges, incubators. They're looking for funds, they're looking for early access to great projects with technical evaluation and tech support from bigger ecosystems and also incubators that are looking for blockchain solutions from the enterprise side. So far, since our rather quiet launch in early February, we have got six applications we have put most of them in touch with what they need and aggressively looking for funds that, align, uh, that are with aligned interests with them to continuously support the projects. And with the accelerating number of the applications we receive every day, we will need more support from the community to come together to look at these projects and also more members to join in order to support them. Members join is not going to be just simply putting $3 million. That's not the, that there is no hard amount of funding or donation required anymore. We want them to, of course, to su support our general ecosystem grant program, but that's not a necessity. We can set the dedicated program with a member for their specific needs. In the example of a certain member, they are at the stage of not having so much funds to give grants themselves, but looking at an ecosystem expansion. With the network of funds of ECF, we'll be able to find funding for the project they want to support technically, at the same time to give opportunities for investment 
to those members that are involved for financial profits. Above all, we also encourage people to just give the projects funding or investment and support directly. And that would still go in, uh, that would still go through the efforts of scouting and evaluation and mentorship of what ECF is doing now. But at the end of the day, it will be up to the decision of these grant programs that we work with, the members, investment programs that we work with, and all the other members that want to be involved as early as possible to decide whether or not they want to give certain support, not just financially, to the projects. And one thing that worth mentioning is that the conflict of interest is somewhat addressed in this situation. We will play a very fair, transparent game in which project or members need to fight for the projects they want to give support to. It's sort of like how um, scholarships are given, right? The reason why you are going to go into certain university might be because they have a better program to support what you want to do, what you're passionate about. Might be also that a scholarship is just a bigger check. But that also goes from different directions. It's a it's, it's mutual decision to make together. So with this ECF network format and our new mechanism, the members get to have the information, the access to the information of great projects that they're looking for or great talent that they are looking for. At the same time, a much lower cost in order to be able to participate. But we still require active participation, such as in the form of a appointed specialist to work with us together to better understand and go directly into the competition to get those projects. And the applicants are no longer just people that we say yes or no to, because they will remain in our network throughout their growth bands, in, in whichever stage that they need support with, we will be able to give support from the network of our members and also from our own networks to give such support, such as investment, funding, mentorship, and partnership that they're looking for. And commercial projects in the scope, of course, also applies. And we also have received a lot of uh, uh, attention and care from our community of supporting our efforts. So in the example of co-working facilities, we have Fournote and Intruno do donating their desk and meeting rooms to the, to the applicants and grantees of ECF. And we're also working with Gitcoin together to find better ways to set milestones for projects, um, for grantees, and for, for members' uh, own dedicated programs, and also to find better ways to incent incentivize community to come together to work on the same initiative. We also look for translators, tech analysts, and local community ma managers to look at projects together in order to better understand and also uh, deliver certain due diligence work that we require. And um, I feel, sorry, why is it out? Okay, sorry. sorry. We wish to become the community projects, at least as one of the alternatives that will be able to represent the community better, to make the voice heard and give more ownership to the community when we are voluntarily joining this cause together. I feel blockchain technology has been able to allow more than ever in history such efforts to be organized better and community, to be, community efforts to be recorded and rewarded better. And for that, I think that's, uh, that might be the one reason that I'm most passionate about this industry ever since I joined in 2013. And I want to end my speech with a poem that I like very much. I did it in Japan when the interpreter basically fled at seeing the slide before my speech, called it a day, and then went off work. And I feel like I could give it another try. It's called um, A Worker Reads History. It's a poem written by Eastern German poet Brecht. 
Who built the seven gates of Thebes? The books are filled with the names of kings. Was it kings who hold the craggy blocks of stone? And Babylon so many times destroyed, who built the city up each time? In the evening when the Chinese war was finished, where did the masons go? Byzantium lives in song. Were all her dwellings palaces? Young Alexander conquered India. He alone? Caesar beat the Gauls. Was, the, was there not even a cook in his army? Philip of Spain wept as his fleet was sunk and destroyed. Were there no other tears? Each page of victory, at whose expense the victory ball? Every ten years a great man, who paid the piper? So many particulars, so many questions. So ladies and gentlemen of the community, I present you the new ECF, the renaissance of ECF, ECF Network. Thank you all for listening. Thank you. <laughs>